Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be upgrading our next cloud install from 6.0 to 7.0. So let's get started. Now, before we begin any of these steps, you got to make sure that you have everything all backed up. This is my disclaimer because there are chances that something might break and there is no way of reverting back the install from seven to six. That's because it alters the database enough so it doesn't work anymore. So just keep that in mind. Anything you need to do, just make sure you have backups, snapshots, whatever it is that you maintain your old information before you do this upgrade. Now, with that being said, there are a couple of ways to install Nixcloud, which is one, the Docker way, or manually installing it through uh, running your own web host or their VMs. Now, what we're only gonna be covering is the Docker install, which is their recommended way. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, jump over to my desktop a little. This is a new installation of KDE. Um, I'm just playing around with some of the theming and settings. I do like the fact that now I could actually have exploded views or stuff like that. I don't know if it's gonna bother me, but it's pretty cool. Anyway. Jumping into our next cloud, this is still 6.0. And the best way to figure out if you are still on six or seven is um, a couple of things. One, if you head over to files, pressing the search bar is still a drop down, while the new one is in the dialog box that you could choose other options. And two, uh, you could go over to any PDF and they should have edit option right over here on the top right, but this doesn't because it's still on six. And also if you head over to uh, administration settings, and then scroll down, you will actually see the version that you are still on 27 or Next Hub Cloud 6. So those are the ways that you could tell if it's still on the old version. The easiest way is just hitting the search bar and you know instantly that it's still on the old one. Now, the easiest way to uh, upgrade this if you are running Portainer uh, is to just use the recreate button. So if you hit recreate, repull image this will pull the latest image on whatever you're using and then you can hit recreate this only applies if you are using something called the latest if you actually put in a version over here then yeah just stuck on that version no matter how many times you upgrade because it's locked in so just use the latest version over here doing the recreate will pull the new image and then automatically upgrade again just make sure you have everything backed up now Obviously the data doesn't get uh, deleted. It's really just the database that gets uh, changed. So that would be the easiest way if you are using Portainer. Now, if you, those of you who are not using Portainer and you are using a command line option, uh, there is a way to do that as well. Now, here's my installation and this is a test installation. This is not my main one. I already upgraded my main one. Uh, but yeah, the first thing you need to do is list out your Docker. So Docker PS to make sure it's running. And this is it. It's called next cloud and we could do docker inspect next cloud and it'll actually show you uh, all the setup options that they have going on over here but you do need to mimic the same thing so these are binds so these would be considered the mounts or the volumes that you're using and as far as the ports as well there's all the options here if you're missing anything you could look through the inspect and find out what you need with that being said, we can now create what we have. So in our case, what we need to do is stop the Docker, remove it, and then reinstall it. So we're gonna do Docker stop next cloud, and that will stop the installation of uh, next cloud running. Then Docker RM remove next cloud, and that will actually remove that. So if I go to Docker PS, it's all gone. Now I could do rebuild this Docker, so Docker and make sure you're using the same structure as before so it could just retain all the information with the updated install. Run dash D name next cloud port 443 443. What happened there? 443 443 volume opt next cloud. Well, this is where I have it, so you better adjust this to what you have. App data colon slash config and we got to make that second volume which is opt next cloud data colon slash data and then restart policy because i remember we had that and you can still scroll up to look it up but restart unless stopped and then we're going to be using the same source as before which is lscr.io slash linux server slash next cloud and I'm going to be using latest 
If it's unable to find the image locally, it will actually download everything it needs and then build it from there. And from here on, it depending on how fast your computer is um, and, in, and your internet speed, um, it'll only take like a couple of minutes. And there we have it. What we can do now is just do a Docker PS just to make sure it's running. And it's been up for five seconds. I know it takes a little bit longer to get it started. So I'm gonna give this like a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds for everything to start running again. And then I should be able to go over to my next cloud. And there we have it. This is the new installation of Nextcloud. And I just refreshed the browser back to the same IP address from before. I can head over to files. And now I could hit the search button on the top right and you see the dialog box that pops up and now I could choose wherever I want to search from. And also now if I go over to PDF, I have the edit option. I can annotate, I could edit text, I could do all the stuff that we weren't able to do on version 6.0. And now if I head over to administration settings, it's Nextcloud 7 version 28. And that was it. It's all a matter of just either rebuilding Docker or redoing it through Portainer. Now, Nextcloud makes it quite simple to do this uh, using Docker. I prefer using Linux server because I used them for a while, but you can use Nextcloud repository instead. And upgrading it this way is pretty seamless. Now, I did this on my own personal install and upgrading from 6.7 with hundreds of gigs of data and it didn't have any problems. So it was pretty seamless. But again, there are chances that something might fail depending on what you have installed or what plugins you have installed. So just be mindful and do backups if you can. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. That was just a quick update on how to upgrade Nextcloud from six to seven. If you wanna know how to install this from scratch, I do have a video on installing it from scratch for our next hub six and i'll leave a link on the top left over here now if you guys have it installed any other way especially like vm you could just download the new vm but the again depending on your mount points and everything you're going to have to figure that out on your own same thing with the web uh, host version if you're upgrading it through the your own install and you're running your own apache server or whatever that is not covered in this video Anyway, if you have any questions about this update, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.